Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf here, one Noli, and today we're gonna be looking over some patch notes for Dragon Blaze, and we have a lot. And when I mean a lot, we have a lot to go over inside of this patch note, since it's gonna be like a really huge update. And it comes out on the second of next month, so that's gonna be fun. All right, we're gonna get a new chapter added on. Uh, let's see, new adventure area. So once we finish the area that we're currently in, we go ahead and go to a new area. Okay. We already talked about the whole level extending to 132. All right, the overlords. Zerzel, Zizel, whichever one it was. <laughs> um, all right. So let's get into his stuff. I'm actually pretty interested about this character, and I'm pretty sure we have a lot more to go through. This video is going to be decently long, considering how long these skills are and how much, how many characters we got to go through. All right. So, Encanter normal attacks increases the magic damage taken to enemies. Uh, first skill recovers deadly energy by 10. Each time a ghost lands a normal attack and increases basic damage received by by 12 percent for 14 seconds also applies an effect that inflicts damage over time this can be stacked by oh this can be stacked up to three times in addition ghost of the grim reaper inflicts twice as damage on bosses Okay, so pretty decent damage when it comes to the first skill. Uh, second skill inflicts damage to one enemy, marks them with a harsh code for 19 seconds. Enemies with harsh code receive more damage from magic attacks. All attacks will register as critical attacks. Oh. In addition, inflicts three times as much damage eh, to bosses so from just that second skill fantastic for magic teams like really good for magic teams okay third skill detonates goes to the okay so that's pretty much detonating the first skill detonates the first skill and inflicts damage on all enemies, applies an effect that deals damage over time for six seconds. The duration for this damage over time is uninflicted by resist. Okay, so resist won't be like decreasing the um, damage over time. Bosses receive twice the amount of damage. In addition, this skill can only be can only be used after a certain period of time has passed from when the ghost is summoned. So I'm guessing the first skill is the thing that summons the Reaper. Okay, each time this skill is used, Zerzul deadly energy is restored by 40. Okay. Pretty decent, pretty decent. Alright, first passive. Increases intelligence of all party members by 227. Okay, not that bad. And increases magic damage. Alright, that, like I said, fantastic for a magic team. Actually, really good for a magic team. Alright, let's keep going. Each time ally dies. Okay, that. Like I said, Translations are weird in this game for some reason. But I'm going to try and tra translate it as best as I can. It's always been iffy. But each time an ally dies, so it restores 50, 50 uh, deadly energy. Magic attack increases. Additional boss damage increases. Magic attack and additional boss damage increases cannot be removed. And can be stacked up to 10 times. Okay. Not half bad. The third passive. 
Once Danny Landry is completely filled, the seal for Harsh Ruler of Death is released for 17 seconds. During this state, Zerzul's magic attack increases. Lord of Harsh Death inflicts damage on all enemies for 3 seconds. Applies an effect that inflicts damage over time for 24 seconds. Stacks up to 4 times in addition once the Lord of, the, of Harsh Death is released, oh, resealed, inflicts damage on all enemies as well as additional damage that is 77% of damage that was done. Alright, if you guys are confused by that, pretty much however much damage he did as soon as the um, Harsh Death was released, he stacks all that up. Then he deals that damage by 77% of it. He only does that's like 77% of it at the end. Then, yeah, that's actually pretty strong compared to if, if, only if he does like a crap ton of damage. But considering that this character seems like he's going to be more related to a PvP magic team. From what I see, that could also be pretty interesting. But still, he can still be used in PvE just because the whole boss damage increase. And what else? All attacks at the harsh... Okay, you're missing of. So if I ever stutter on a word, then you guys already know what the fuck is going on. Um, all attacks that Lord of Harsh Death deals... Inflicts twice as much damage on bosses. Alright, never mind. Yeah, it's pretty decent both ways. Not bad. Alright, what else? So we got the Max Enhance. The amount of dark energy you carried is doubled and your party's magic attack is increased. Okay, like I said, magic team. Each time the Harsh Lord of Death seals Seal is released, Zerzul's additional boss damage increased, and magic damage increased to the whole party. Stacks two times. Jesus Christ. Um Yeah. From what I see, this guy is just straight up magic team heavy, so I'm gonna have to avoid him since I am focusing on the physical team now. But Dear God, this man is something else, especially if you're building a whole magic team. You guys definitely would, I would definitely recommend this guy. But then again, that's up to you guys. That's completely up to you guys. All right, now we got Frances here. Eh, kind of like her design in a way. All right, she's an archer. She decreases enemy defense. Okay, let's get into the first skill. As the power of darkness to her weapon for 21 seconds, all of Frances' direct attacks inflict twice the amount of damage to normal enemies and four times the damage to bosses. Okay. In addition, while power of darkness is activated, Frances' attack increases and additional boss damage increases. This cannot be cannot be removed and is even uninflicted by Cerberus. Okay, so Cerberus, if you guys don't know, removes buffs. So what I'm guessing here is Cerberus legit can't take away her buffs. So she's going to be really good for Cerberus. Alright, second skill. Inflicts damage to all enemies. Increases... Incoming physical damage by 114% and 18 seconds and applies an effect that inflicts damage over time. All right, decent. Skill number three. Enhance allies weapons for 24 seconds. Okay, now that I think about it, she is a blacksmith. 
I was so confused about that. I was just like, what is her design? Now that I think about it, yeah, she is definitely a blacksmith. <laughs> I don't know why I just noticed that. This effect ends after it is used seven times and is unaffected by Cerberus. Okay. In addition, the attack of the Varman family that fights um, Chariot, our little flaming turtle friend, increases damage. Okay, so she's basically like um, Kronos. To where uh, Kronos usually increases their damage too. So she's great for a world boss altogether. So that's going to be really nice. Alright, passives. Her first passive is her fourth attack. I'm guessing her fourth normal attack. And the skills don't count, but... And... Doesn't really specify. But her fourth attack inflicts damage to all enemies. And inflicts three times as much as damage on boss enemies. And increases physical damage received for 15 seconds. And increases physical damage effect. Can be stacked three times. Okay, cool. Alright, second passive. Increases your range attack and your dex. So that's mostly just for her. Since she is an archer, dex increases her attack. Alright, second passive. Increases your additional boss damage. Pretty straightforward. Alright. <laughs> when using Shrouding Darkness, uh, which one is that? Okay, the first skill. When using Shrouding Darkness, your AoE attacks increase and can suck up to 10 times. In addition, when using Blacksmith's Blessing, which I'm pretty sure is the third skill, right? Yeah. Physical damage, physical attack increases for 30 seconds. Okay. Alright, the Ultimate Enhance. Increase physical attack of all party members and addition when using blacksmith blessing increase boss damage. Okay. Hold on. So really good versus bosses for sure. World boss is where she shines. Well physical world bosses is where she shines. I can't say any anywhere else at the moment. <laughs> but yeah, she seems very, very world boss heavy. Which, if you guys are trying to get like a way better score inside of world boss, she is definitely a keeper. She seems like she'll be good in other bosses too, like um, Guild Adventure. So, you guys can try her out there, but she seems more of a person that shines inside of world bosses. Alright, Clay. Hmm. They're pretty much the attack. From what that sentence says right there, she's pretty much going to be the whole um, tag match queen. So she's pretty much like Galia, is what they were saying. What people have been telling me before she was like released. They basically called her um, Galia 2.0. <laughs> Alright, so Clay, she's a warrior. She increases her attack speed on her normal attacks. Alright, let's get into skills. First skill inflicts damage to one enemy and increases all damage for 17 seconds. And enemies under this effect cannot be healed. Oh. Oh, she's pretty much going to be singling out like a lot of people. So not only tag, she can be useful inside of um, Arena as well. Okay. Alright, second skill reflects all enemy attacks for five seconds. Okay. When reflecting, removes buffs from enemies and inflicts damage equal to the max HP. Well, 30% of the max HP. So that's pretty much a good tank killer right there. This skill cannot be removed. So it kind of reminds me of... Um, Ban a little bit. You could probably be like Ban's, but hers seems like it reflects all damage and she's not really affected by anything. So that's actually pretty decent. Alright, third skill. 
increases melee attack and attack speed and fixed damage for 12, for 11 seconds. Okay. Jesus Christ, woman. Inflicts additional damage equal to 9% of max HP. Also is immune to all abnormal status effects when a normal attack is used during elegant sword play. This skill cannot be removed. Okay. Just from hearing that, uh, I kind of... Thanks to um, Knight's Chronicle, I kind of learned what the whole add normal effect versus like other effects is. So add normal effects are pretty much like lowering stats. Um, so let's just say pretty much anything that's not damage over time. Damage, damage over time can still affect her. Any other like status effect does not affect her. So like that death thing that um, Howl has that does affect her. Um, removes like healing can't be healed does not affect her things like that reducing healing yeah things like that can't really affect her status effects can't affect her so you can't lower her attack or anything during that yeah thanks to nice chronicle i actually learned that because they actually they actually tell us which effects are which all right let's get into the first skill increases attack speed fixed damage for 47 seconds every time clay lands four attacks okay stack up to five oh stack up to five times so she's gonna be just going at it from what i see that's gonna be interesting to, to like witness for 17 seconds and flicks additional damage 25% of max HP on a target upon normal attack. This effect cannot be removed and ignores enemies' immunities. Oh, wow. Just, uh, that's rude. <laughs> Very rude. All right. Third passive. Enemies cannot land critical hits on clay. Oh, wow. Also, when an enemy on the battlefield dies... Your fixed damage is increased, and this can stack up to seven times. All right, it could be useful inside of adventure, not much inside of um, bosses or anything like that. They're pretty pretty decent. All right, let's get into all the enhances. The max enhance decreases skill attacks of enemies. And also gains invincibility when using perfect repose. Cannot be removed. Nice, 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 nice. Alright. Ultimate Enhance. Clay's attacks don't miss when using Elegant Swordplay. Inflicts damage two times the max HP upon normal attack. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Resets cooldown for Mind's Eye, which is pretty much this. And increases melee damage when an enemy dies. Eh, pretty, pretty decent character, to be honest. But if anything, I say she's definitely PvP heavy. So you can use her in Arena or Tag. I feel like she'll, t she'll definitely shine in Tag a little bit. But she can definitely be used inside of the arena team. All right, so we got Zane. Get Zane. He's all buff and everything. Got his own gloves. <laughs> Zane is a mage, by the way. Even though he looks like a tank, he is actually a mage. Even though he could could be like a hybrid or something, you know. But they don't have hybrids in this game. If you guys are wondering, if you guys are like newer players wondering if they have hybrids, no, they don't. They only have a set classes. So Zane is mage. Normal attack increases damage taken. Well, magic damage taken to enemies. All right, let's get into the skills. First skill inflicts damage on one enemy, and inflicts damage to nearby enemies. Inflicts damage over time for 26 seconds on one target. Can stack up to three times. Pretty decent. Second skill inflicts damage on all enemies. 
and stuns them for 18 seconds. You guys may think that's long in this game. It's kind of not, just saying. But it gets, and plus it has a chance of hitting because we have so many healers or so many characters that pretty much counter like some of these effects. But, you know, yeah. Also increases magic damage taken to enemies. Okay. Applies effect up to two times. Can only stack up to two times, guys. Remember that. Alright, third skill. Afflicts damage to one enemy upon normal attack. Wait, what? Huh? Isn't that like a passive thing? Uh, upon normal attack, that is weird. Oh, okay, I guess his um, gauntlets change attributes. Like, he changes to explosion for one of his attacks, then he... Okay, so it's pretty much like um, Llewellyn, how she used to be, is what I'm going to guess here. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just I'm just going to roll with it, and I'm not going to guess until I'm done with every, every last skill. Alright, upon normal attacks, inflicts damage over time for 44 seconds, can stack up to 20 times, effect ends after 20 normal hits, and inflicting damage to all enemies. Inflicts twice the amount of damage on bosses. Alright. So I'm guessing this is kind of like a gauntlet thing. To where it just... Yeah, let's just say it's like Llewellyn. If you guys have used Llewellyn before. Alright. Let's get into the passives. Either every seventh enemy hits. So that just pretty much means the whole enemy team. It's not like just one enemy has to hit you seven times. Pretty much the whole enemy team counts. Magic attack increases for 38 seconds. Stacks up to 5 times. If you guys are curious why I'm not saying the percentage, it's just because I know I'm going to butcher it and stumble over it. So I just normally skip it. And you guys need to pay attention anyway. <laughs> Some of you guys who are just leaving me off to the side, jerks. Alright, second passive. Increases additional bus damage when one enemy remains on the field. Wait. Oh, okay. So that's mostly aimed towards the bosses. So if you want to, like, carry them into, like, a world boss, you know, with a magic team or something, I guess that could be useful. I guess. Stacks up to six times, it cannot be removed. All right. Third passive increases your melee attack so he so he does do melee damage so you can partner him up with a melee team if you want but that's gonna be really weird so I wouldn't recommend it I just recommend putting him inside of a normal magic team unless you want to go down that route ah I don't know people build weirdly especially with this guy so yeah Zane is weird <laughs> all right let's go into the enhances all right, first enhance is the max enhance. The max enhance increase melee damage upon using fire demon. Okay, it's this one. This one right here. You see that? Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Stacks up to eight times and cannot be removed. Ultimate enhance increases melee damage upon using okay so everything's gonna be just a fire demon DFI is that all we're increasing this at this point seems so and increases magic damage received on enemies by 20% inflicts twice the amount of damage at the end of fire demon DFI all right increases single target damage when okay they forgot the w when this is used and that is your second passive decent confusing as hell of a character but decent you don't know where if you want to put him inside of a team that builds melee or ah eh, i guess he builds his own melee zane is weird zane is very weird He is not a warrior, nor a melee fighter. As we cut over here to, you know, melee attack increase. 
melee attack increase. Like, what? <laughs> All right. As we move on to my girl Bonnie here. Oh, well then. Want a sip? It's sweet. Just like your last breath. Okay, well, that, that rude. <laughs> All right, Bonnie is a priest. She stuns enemies off her normal attack. Sounds like fun, right? It doesn't really say how long the stun is, though. That's that's the only thing that's really weird about that. But, yeah. <laughs> all you need to know is she stuns, okay? That's all you need to know. Alright, let's get into her skills. The first skill. Remove buffs from one enemy. Plunders their HP. Equals up to... 30... 35%? Hold up, what the fuck does plunder mean? So you're just gonna... Snatch... <laughs> So you're pretty much saying you're going to snatch my man's HP just like that. All right. And heals the team. Oh, okay. And heals all allies equal to 60% of the stolen HP. HP does not max, like, match up here. That confused the hell out of me. I won't even lie. So I guess... Oh, okay. Never mind. I, I was thinking way too hard here. So when you steal the HP, you'll get like a certain number... Then that number will take 60% off of it and put it to everybody else. I mean, you guys can't blame me. Dragon Blaze has had like weird translations for like ever since the game started. So don't at me, okay? <laughs> when enemies die from this skill, they cannot be revived. Does not work on the bosses, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> Alright, second skill inflicts damage to all enemies and plunders their buffs, which is given to all allies. Yeah, uh-huh. Sounds like fun, right? <laughs> just just imagine running into that in arena. Running into that arena sounds very fun, right? Just having all your buffs stolen and used against you. <laughs> Even though you, you can't really take... Um, Kronos' uh, buffs or anything like that. You can't take any like special buffs that are unique to the character or anything. If, if you could, that would, that would actually be pretty broken. But we're not going to talk about that. I don't want to give them any ideas. But the third skill inflicts damage to all enemies and increases physical damage they receive for 22 seconds. Heals all party members for the amount stolen after purifying all the allies of debuffs okay pretty nice cleanse increases physical attack for 18 seconds okay increases the physical damage enemies receive and increases physical attack of all party members by another 35 percent for each buff that is taken by the second skill so what what happens if if the third skill is used before the second skill though that, that's a real question yeah didn't think about that one did you <laughs> effects applied to the enemy and all party members are stacked up to three times man not bad actually pretty decent but like I said to you guys earlier like in a different video Bonnie does not have a revive so yeah, that's the only thing that hinders her, but she is a fantastic healer, for sure. That's fantastic physical healer, let me specify that, because she goes into physical teams. I said she could go into a magical team or physical team last video, but physical team. <laughs> Alright, passives. First passive, increases stamina and all your main stats and physical attack. For all party members. Okay. So more HP. And more of your main stats. So which pretty much increases your attack. So dex, strength, intelligence. All those are increased. But it used to affect like other like sub stats. But it doesn't anymore. Like strength used to affect defense too. It doesn't anymore. They took that out of the game like way back then. And now it only increases like warriors or any, pretty much any tanks like actual attack. So yeah, that sucks. It, 
I mean, scaling on that would have been like insane, and Warriors would probably never die at that point, considering how much defense we could have had with that still around. You know, it would have been fantastic to still have that around, to be honest, with the whole like tanking issue going on, where our, even our tanks are getting smashed pretty easily. But yeah, I'm not going to talk about that one. That's a later video. Before we go on to the second pass, rewind. I was actually kind of right and kind of wrong at the same time. She can go into a magic team. I was not looking at this. But it would be weird to put her inside of a magic team when she has the physical buffs. Help me. Please understand this. Both her and Zane are weird. Let's just say that. Both her and Zane are retardedly weird. Let's just put that out there. But second passive applies curse whenever plundering time and pirates rep repayment are used twice. Cursed enemies are prevented from healing for up to oh my god, <laughs> fifty-seven seconds. I think that's the highest like um debuff we've had inside of this whole game to be honest has their attack speed decreased by 70 percent and cursed enemies cannot be revived once they die okay <laughs> boss type enemies that are hit by this receives increased physical damage and cannot be removed so, um, yeah, very dangerous in PvP. Well, in Arena. Can't can't really say um, Tag. Tag is probably a terrible place to put her. Please don't put Priests inside of Tag, guys. It, it makes no sense. Unless they can solo. No, don't, don't put Priests inside of Tag. <laughs> That's just weird. All right, the third passive. Increases defense, damage taken on party. Okay. Make it a target, make it a party a little bit more tanky, a little bit. Uh, for what we know, this is like a drastic increase. To be honest, from what we've experienced, that tankiness in this game does not really exist anymore. <laughs> But, yeah, it makes them pretty much a little bit more resilient. You really don't feel the tankish feel like you used to feel when the game first started. But it's it's kind of there. Just just a slim. It's this little slither. All right. Enough of that. <laughs> Next, we're going to get into the enhanced skills. All right. Max enhance. Decreases the attack. All right, max enhance decreases the skill attack of enemies when using plundering time. All party members, hold up, let me check this. Which one is plundering time? Okay, the first skill. I always have to go back and check just to make sure. When using plundering time, all party members receive 48% of enemies attack for eight seconds. Wait, what? I think I read that weird, but we're going to continue on. Maybe maybe I'll get that later on. When using Blessing, which is the third skill, when using your third skill, additional boss damage increased for all party members. All right. Ultimate Enhance, increase physical attack, HP, and additional boss damage for all party members doubles life steal and healing effects upon plundering time. So that's actually pretty decent when you get her to ultimate. Oh god, we're gonna have a lot of skills to go back over when it comes to like the um, overlords. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave that for a different video or just throw it in this one. Shit, fuck it. I might just throw it in this one. <laughs> Since we're going through all this. 
But all right, we have Christopher here. Now let's go on an adventure. He's a rogue. His normal attack increased normal attack received on enemies. So pretty much hitting them, they take more damage. Let's just say that. I think that's way better. They just take more physical damage. Let's just say that for now on instead of receive. All right, let's get into the skills. All right, first skill inflicts damage to all enemies and they take more physical damage for eight seconds. Afterwards, inflicts damage to one enemy and increases normal attack for 20 seconds, stacked up to two times. Second skill increases normal attack by 900% for seven seconds and increases normal attacks cycle for 20 seconds percent whoops did i say 20 seconds might be but decreases your uh, normal attacks by 20 percent so i guess we are um they're just mean that it's going to constantly keep attacking pretty much like attack speed all right third skill deals damage to all enemies and it seems like the enemies take increased melee damage for 19 seconds. And that stacks up to three times. Also increases your melee attack for nearly 17 seconds. And inflicts damage to all enemies and four times more to bosses upon normal attack. The damage inflicted to an enemy when the skill is activated increases normal attacks effects granted to you cannot be removed so i'm guessing everything else can be removed though all right let's get into the passives the bread and butter all right the first passive disregards attack speed and uses normal attacks every five seconds okay inflicts 10 times the damage upon normal attacks jesus christ and incre increases attack of normal attacks by 30%, which can increase up to 300 times. Okay. The increased effect is kept even after being tagged or at death. So you can revive him. And you can stack it up more, revive him, stack it up more. It's not going anywhere, people. That's all you need to know. So Chris, Christopher is not affected by attack speed at all. So, yeah, don't even try to build it on him or anything. So you guys have those little necklaces or anything. Yeah, those are fine. But just just note that attack speed does not really work on him at all. All right. Oh, I had to double check something. I was about to say. Oh, no, that was on a different character. I was about to say, hold on. All right, second passive. Increases additional boss damage to all party members and a normal attacks. Okay, yep. Mm-hmm. So Christopher's going to just be spanking people. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Third passive increases attack of the vermin family, which is against Chariot, our flaming turtle. Additional boss damage increase too. Like I said, Christopher could be really, really good towards bosses. And for tag. Christopher looks like he can really shine in tag though. Especially with that. He's like a charged up um, Diane. All right, enhanced skills increase physical attack of all party members. Upon using corruption of the deep sea, the effects are tripled and additional boss damage received. Uh, what? Oh, hmm. Okay. Well, uh, 
when the fuck do we count this as broken? <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I don't know. It probably couldn't be broken. It probably won't be. But we're going to try him out for sure. I, I want to get this to Max sooner or later down the road. Or somebody who uses Christopher. If you get this to Max, let me know if Chris, Christopher destroyed bosses. I need to know this. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure some of you guys are after Christopher as soon as he comes out. For sure. Alright. The ultimate enhance. Decreases normal attack cycle by 20%. Increases attack damage by... Wait, hold on. One more attack cycle. That, that's weird. Disregard attack speed, but no more attack cycle is a new thing. We haven't really heard the term for. So that's going to be interesting to see what that actually is. I'm pretty sure it's just like skipping the attack animation or something like that. Reducing the attack animation? I, I have no idea, to be honest. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Increases normal attack and additional boss damage upon using upon using Tsunami of Rage. Stacks up to 8 times and cannot be removed. Uh, tsunami of Rage. Okay, there it is. Third skill. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Thank God we got through... Those, I'm not sure. I don't think we're missing anyone. I think that was legit all of them. If I did miss one and it's not there, my B. <laughs> Alright, other overlords got their stuff enhanced. They got their ultimates. We'll go over those afterwards. This, Like I said, this is going to be a pretty long video because this is going to be huge updates. Um, most characters got rebalances as well. I don't think they're going to tell us those rebalances. Yeah, I doubt they're going to tell us those rebalances, to be honest. But it seems like all the old overlords, along with Kai, Sai, and C, have gotten rebalances. Or Cs. And Ion, Ren Ren, Miyu, and Aaron have gotten rebalances. Not Ban, though. Or Momo. Momo is just fine. Ban, Ban does not need a rebalance. That's all we... I can tell you, that man is strong enough. We got new master achievements. For ultimately all of them. Okay. So we get these little... Um, so when it comes to achievements, we get these little like um, rings or accessories that we put on characters. And it increases like their stats by like... Oh, Pretty much a whole bunch, especially if it's like Overlord. It should be a lot, right? We'll see. Now we got new owned effects. We're going to get all these effects by default just because we're going to get the characters, but they're all going to be normal stats. Character HP increased. Like, that's going to help us. Can you increase our defense too? <laughs> we get one shot at like easy. It's not, the, it's not even the HP that's a problem, it's the defense. <laughs> We can't survive anything, to be honest. Alright. The whole five soul thing for four changes to one for one. So if you guys don't know, it takes five souls to convert to a different soul. So, yeah. You would take five, convert it for one soul of a, like a different soul. So let's say... Yeah, let's use this page as an example. I would have to have five warrior souls and one archer soul over here. At least one ar archer soul. If you had zero, you couldn't convert. So pretty much we would take five souls and convert them for four over here. Which was annoying. But now they're changing it one for one. So you can convert like 50 souls to 50 souls over here. Thank God that system's coming. Alright, number 10. Enhanced ally crafting and enhanced system improved. Okay, minimized transcended ally crafting process. Deified allies will not be needed to craft transcended allies. Oh, okay. That's that makes deified units 
useless now, and will probably be taken out of the game or something, you know. <laughs> but yeah, that that's the thing. Transcendent Essence Purchase button. Add its, oh, you just want, oh, okay, I was about to say, hold on. I totally skipped, like, the whole purchase thing. So they're just going to add a button next to the whole ally thing for Transcendent Tab. The enhancement fee decreased for Transcendent Allies. Eh. Does the enhancement fee also count towards um, allies? That's what I'm hoping. Guild system improvement. Yay! Something that can actually be used for us. But, yeah, I'm not sure how it's going to go, but let's get into it. Guild tier system added. Tier decided by guild battle or siege rank. So we are going to have to do way more guild battles and guild siege. So I can just auto this at night and just leave it there without a current care in the world and get some wins or losses, you know. All right. Guild shop added. Guild coins acquired from guild siege or guild tournament. What the fuck is guild tournament? <laughs> so that's what I would love to know. Can be purchased. Can be used to purchase items. What the fuck is guild tournament? I don't think I like that. Is guild tournament basically guild battle? Or did they change? I'm so confused. <laughs> Screw it. Guild emblems and guild buffs content added to guild shop. Okay. All right. Here's guild takeover. The thing that most guilds won't be in. Mostly because not all guilds have 50 players. I'm seriously hoping this does not require 50 players because then that would be a massive um, problem for the game. Because if you need 50 players, that's going to be pretty much a very steep thing we can't do. Because we only have like 29 or... 30, no, we got like 29 people in Cyber Guild. Probably less because we do have some inactives that are waiting for like the later updates in the game or just completely quit it in general so yeah loaded located in the guild gorge all players can sign up every monday i'm not even going to give you guys the time because it's military time as well so yeah on tuesday the opponent guild will begin matching on tuesday after matching the guild takeover will start. Where are th I'm confused. Are they trying to say guild or is this just a different name for it? If it's a if it's not a different name for it, then somebody's pushing the E button way too much. And they need it removed. <laughs> Remove their E button. And just have everything translated without an E. No, I'm just kidding. No, please don't do that. System set. Ten defender parties. Each on five defending castles according to attack power rating. So it goes from weakest to strongest is pretty much what I see. Alright, guild members who sign up. The guild battle siege. Okay, that's, that was worded weirdly. Guild members who sign up for the guild siege battle have to attack to... Have to attack to the. Oh, what? dude. Okay, can we get a proofreader? I'm. I'm sorry. I. I know I'm bad at like typing and reading and stuff, but it's sometimes where I don't have to be professional though. Just saying. Kind of do need like somewhat of a proofreader though. I'm not trying to like start shit or anything like that. It's just that, from what I've noticed, that they made like. A few typos or something like that. If anything, just have the guy go around and have people proofread it. That would definitely help him out a little bit more. You can always use a proofreader no matter what like writing you're in. But alright. Guild members 
who sign up for the guild siege battle have to attack the opponent guild castle and can attack the enemies only three times. Winning rules. For winning, you have to dominate all opponents of the castle. If all guild have not dominated all of the opponent castle, I'm sorry if I'm stuttering. Like I said, kind of weird translations here, kind of rough. Maybe, actually, maybe English is not their first, um, not their first language. That could be an issue too. So I'm not, I'm not going to give them too much shit about it, to be honest. I, I can understand it quite well. Quite a bit, now that I'm kind of used to it. Winter is dependent according to low rule. Blow rule. And what? Oh. Alright, one. Guild have more remaining castles. Okay, okay, I see where this is going. I see where this is going. So when it says take over, you pretty much attack a castle. And I guess put your team there. Then take another castle, put your team there. Somewhat like that. Is what I'm getting at. Or is it just like take over a castle and it's yours. Then they have to fight that team that's there. Your like set main team. It's either going to be. It's either going to be between one of those. If they. If we defend the castle. If we defend three castles and the enemy defends two. We win. Alright. You would have three depend parties. If we have seven parties and seven enemy parties, we win. Draw at the same case. I just want to say I hated reading this section. I won't even lie to you. All right. <laughs> League battle. I'm probably going to hate this one too. All right. All right. League battle will be automatically proceeded upon users join and according to user rank users will either be promoted or relegated or stay as the same league consists of five leagues normal hero dfi transcended overlord league all right join by choosing five allies and two helpers as party members from Monday to Tuesday, four matches will be held daily. On Friday, five matches will be held daily. Rewards will be distributed based on final ranking each week. Users that have not logged in for three weeks will not be will be unable to participate in Battle League. Wait, what? So does that mean they can't? join it in general or is it just like hey you, you're you can't join it for this week but next week you can join it that'd be weird if you can't join for huh I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like hey you log in you can't join it for this week but you can join it next week pretty sure it's like that um fortress battle will be removed this was never really <laughs> played in to be honest I'm pretty sure none of us actually really dedicated ourselves to doing this. And plus, they haven't really given us any quests for it. Now that I think about it, have they? Do we have daily quests still for that? I'm pretty sure we probably did. Guild Adventure Renewal. Oh, dear God. Please don't buff. <laughs> it's uh, actually it's just a renewal. It's just a renewal. We don't have to worry about it too much. All right. Guild Adventure will be held 24 hours every Saturday, just like World Bond. Wait, what? Okay, hold on. Let, let me make sure I read that right. Guild Adventure will be held for 24 hours every Saturday, just like World Bosses. Oh, I did read that right. Okay. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> All right. Parties with one character, four allies, one helper. Okay. Rival system added. Guild members can go on guild adventure. Huh? 
Go battles for 10 minutes. And according... Okay. So it just pretty much replaced. Dude, that's so boring. But all right. I I see what they're doing. They're... I mean, they're making it just like um, World Boss. So it's no longer the, the hey, special event, log in with your friends and play for the whole day. It's pretty much like World Boss. Now you guys are going to talk less with each other just because it's 24 hours. So you can do it at any time you want. Yeah, that's that sounds like fun. Ranks renewed to competitive content so you're going to just be competing with your guild that's pretty much what it is instead of working together with your guild now i don't i don't know i don't know we'll see how it is to be honest daily dungeon renewed oh are we gonna have more rewards drop yeah more reward drop yay hold on so, Daily Dungeon Renewal, Daily Dungeon Difficulty Renewed to Normal, and Myth. So, that pretty much means a lot of this, uh, well, the other one, which one was it? God, I've really been focusing on it because I've only just been doing Myth, but yeah. So, they took out one of the difficulties, now instead of three, it's just... Um, between these. I think it was Epic that was here. We'll, we'll look at it. We'll, I'll try to remember that. We'll look at it. But anywho. You only enter one time. One time. One. Not, not two. One. Not three. One. So yeah. They're giving us like extra. So we can just join in like one time. And they're just giving us, like... Well, actually, yeah, they're giving us more. Instead of um, less, to be honest. Okay, they're giving us nearly as much as we used to get. Rewards renewed. Entry re reset. So I'm pretty sure you can reset... Super reset your entries anytime. You can buy yourself back in, like, once. Or they probably just took that out altogether. You can only buy back in once. Or you can only go in once, is what I meant. That's going to be interesting to see. Definitely going to be trying that out. Daily Dungeon will be closed after maintenance. Okay, so Daily Dungeons will be closed after maintenance. So if you use them before maintenance, then you're good. You're pretty much good there. Unless it like goes through the whole day, you know, things like that. Because I'm pretty sure we have had like a whole day maintenance before, haven't we? I feel like we have once. Hopefully it doesn't change that again. Daily Dungeon now remembers the difficulty of the last dungeon. Oh, it was Hero! That's what it was. I think it was Hero instead of Epic. I think I was thinking of Gears. <laughs> But uh, Thursday, Dungeon Renew. So on Thursday, daily rewards increase. Wait, is it just on Thursdays? Or is this just like maintenance Thursday or something? Oh, this is definitely not maintenance Thursday. So I guess this is like a special event to where it just increases to 20. And on the rest of the days, it's just 12. I mean, that's what I want to guess so on oh okay so is it like on the date that um essence is up and is free it increases but on the, all the other dates if you buy into the dungeon it's only like 12 okay yeah I okay I get it I get it that was was a little bit rough but I get it 17 <laughs> jesus christ we have so much challenger content challenger dungeon content improved consume burning energy selectively during auto 
So you can choose to use your burning gauge or not, is what I'm guessing here. Alright. Alright, Challenger Dungeon options renewed into two types. You could turn off and on your uh, burning gauge or your retry stage. Well, gauge. Yeah, okay, that's decent. That's a good choice, to be honest. Move the button to the Challenger Skill Growth Book. Add it to each content lobby. Okay, so pretty much everywhere you go, you will have uh, an easy access to the Challenger book. And Challenger Dungeon Lobby Mark will be added to inform players about remaining levels that could be completed. Rewards display UI. Alright, just UI changes and stuff. Pretty normal stuff. But, yeah, nothing really... All that drastic, to be honest. Alright. Alright, pub battles. Adventurer Century. Former DFI is added to... My what? Former DFI allies. So... Is that just saying we're going to be completely taking out the DFIs? Is what I'm hearing. <laughs> Former DFI allies added to the Sanctuary teams. Selection time for team cheering has been decreased to five. So this is your timer. You have to pick a team of who you want to vote for within 15 seconds now. Battle time decreased from one minute to four, 40 seconds. Nice, nice, nice. Nightmare improved. I never do this. <laughs> I never want to. But let's see what they improve. Certain pre-measures of... Nightmare Floors. Difficulty nerfed? Huh. Rewards boosted, though. We'll see. We'll see if I go back in there. As of right now, I... No, I'm good. Yay, tower extended to something I still can't reach because... Difficulty. <laughs> Ranking content. Balance. And reward adjusted. All right, let's see. Fight content. Rewards boosted. Rank buff. Reward buffed. World boss adjusted. Eh. Normal stuff. Guild concept reserve system improved. Users will be automatically moved to reserve 10 minutes. It is starting... From automatic content such as PV, such as Arena, Raid, Challenger, Dungeon, etc. Yours will be. Oh, okay. Okay, I see, I see, I see, I see. So if you're inside of one of these, it will move you to guild content, is what I'm pretty much seeing here. With no time end. Alright, pretty straightforward. Whoa, what's this? Underground rune floor. Guild exploration. Now we're going back into the guild. How much crap do we still have? Jesus Christ. There's so much more. Oh my god. I thought it was just going to be just, just a little bit of small things, but no. Oh dear god, there's, there's way more. Guys, why am I doing this? Alright, so... Guild content character party registration method modified. You will now be able to set up your characters in possession when setting up your party support. Is that just meaning my gears are going to be set up for these? Or is it going to be... That's weird. Anywho. Half of this stuff I don't understand. I'm just going to be real with you guys. Half of this crap I don't understand. I'm pretty sure most of the crap you guys don't understand either. I, I'm in the same book with you. But for those of you guys who understand. It's 
Good for you, bro. <laughs> Help me. All right, guild loot battles. HP setting ratio nerfed. Wait, what? Okay. Normal soldiers HP increased for reduced for reduced guild loot battle time. Guild loot battles balance adjusted shortened the battle time. Why do they keep trying to shorten guild loot? Every time. Have we not noticed that? They always try to shorten guild loot. Alright, um guild buff status buffed. All right, we're just going to go through some of these pretty quickly. New beginner missions and stuff like that. 50% off daily dungeons. Yeah. All right. Some of that's really important out of that. Daily quest rewards improved. All double rewards for today's uh, normal stuff. DFI ally sales converted. Wait, hold up. What? DFI. So you can convert DFI units? Is what I'm seeing? DFI ally souls converted system. Due to lack of demand for uh, DFI allies. I mean, we don't really use them. We have nothing to use them for since you took away Hero Tower. So. Yeah. <laughs> yep, could have made an Overlord Tower, but nope. Or Myth Tower, but nope. Ah, that's not the thing. Alright, anywho. Accessory Combine feature. Combine three equal accessories and acquire a higher grade. Combine four. Paid. Oh, no, 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 no. Fuck that. Combine space time. Oh, we, so we could. Are you saying we could buy the ones from Coin Shop? Okay. I don't. I don't know about those. Those are paid ones. I don't even know what the hell you would get out of that. That's a. That's a larger question. What the hell would you get out of that? Would you combine? Huh? Would you combine like? Let's say. Sky Griffins, would you combine four Sky Griffins into just like one main Sky Griffin that you could just put on yourself and it has like all the stats of if you were to have like a full slotted? Nah, eh, no, nah, I wouldn't say that. Eh, 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 eh. Alright, anywho. Transcended equipment craft methods increased. Oh, no, not increased. Um, Improved. <sighs> Left and right button added for users easily change between transcended equipment enhanced screen. Oh, so if instead of like going out and selecting a different equipment, you can just click this and go to whichever equipment that's, in, that's equipped on your encounter or whatever character you're actually looking at. Cancer AI. <laughs> when users tab a certain transcendent equipment materials, material goes into inventory, material inventory. Okay, that's not really important things to go over. But you guys can look at that yourselves. I, I'm trying not to go through like every single one of these. These are really annoying. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. Former DFI units added to double S content tickets. Okay. All right, hold on. So, all right, all right, I get it, I get it. So they're just gonna add in DFIs into like um, normal ally tickets since they're basically normal units now that can be converted is what I'm guessing. New items, Overlord Enhanced Ticket. Overlord Ultimate Enhanced Ticket added. Where the hell do you get something like that? <laughs> of course, that would go for fence or. Hmm. 
No, I'm just kidding. That's probably on their server or something. They were just testing it out or something. All right. Max selection ticket. Are they going to give us this to us for the first time or something? That's the real question. Because I was talking about giving us like a ultimate enhance or a max enhance ticket for one of these characters. But, you know, that could probably be like a purchase thing. You never know. Ruby discount ticket. Wait, what? Where the hell do you find those? Oh, those are purchase. Nah, we're good. Wait, hold on. Will you purchase Ruby products? So I'm guessing... Anything you purchase for Rubies or anything that you... Kit rubies? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you there. All right. Pet function improved. More options added to allies. Auto enhance. Mint. Double, double S allies. Available enhanced material can be selected from S to C rank. And an S allies. Available enhanced material selected. Okay. So that's pretty much these going into that and this going into that, if you guys are confused. I was a little bit confused at first, but then I actually started to think about it. When you do not have a double SR ally, Smart Enhance allows you to automatically enhance an S ally and craft an ally. I thought we already had that. I guess not. All right. Enhance Pets Deadly Fire, which is this pet right here, which combines items. Like uh, cards and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it was cards. Combine um, jewels has been extended to double S. So if you guys don't know, it would only extend to pretty much enhancing, enhancing up to double double S jewels. Now it can only enhance up to double S jewels, which is nice. A higher grade. Of jewels. God damn it, dude. I don't need any higher grades. But that's that's like some huge stat increase, but f fuck off. I only have so many jewels. I can't reach that high. I'll try, but you know, no promises. So these are now just normal tickets. They're no longer going to be selected to like armor or weapons, which is a nice change. Because I hate trying to find a selected one for these, like, gears. It's really annoying. Coin shop. Items have been added. So we got new accessories. We got new jewels. Oh, no. These crappy jewels have been removed. These jewels that nobody buys. That you can easily craft, like, better. Or combine better jewels than these. Way better. Way better, I tell you. Oh, what? Oh, no. Oh, no. They're adding get a secret shop. Oh, no. So, if you guys don't know, in most games, secret shops are where they just take a huge amount of your um, currency. Or your, your paid currency. Let's just say rupees. They take a huge amount of your rubies. Ooh. Ooh, boy. That's going to be fun. But her shop only opens on Saturdays through Sunday. That's gonna be f fun. I mean, just look. If you want, if you need like one more order, I was gonna call you. Yeah, that's gonna cost you like fifteen, fifteen thousand. Just because you can buy it three times, you can get them all for free compared to the ones that you guys have purchased. Oh, mm. it feels bad, guys. Invite has been increased. Other improvements that I honestly don't want to read. But more than likely have to until we get to bug fixes. Then bug fixes, you guys can just read yourselves. Then we get down here and stuff like that. But, alright, let's get into improvements. Pigs. Rewards have been boosted. Inventory. Ally enhanced gold. Discount. To overlords. Nerfs. We already seen that one. When you achieve 
level 45 and uh, level 50 arc buster arc buster appearance will change oh god so he turns into even more of a badass okay that sounds like fun even though i haven't been increasing mines because there hasn't been really been a reason for me to increase it except for world boss or um daily dungeon and that's pretty much it <laughs> i don't really care about the monday world boss to be honest you can now set up the current world boss party using previous world body from your record. Okay, so if you have like a... So I'm gonna guess here. Hold on, let me reread that one more time. You can now set up your current party, world boss party, using the previous party from your... Oh, okay, so you can just go into your previous challenge record and select that team. And it will... Whichever team you like had the highest damage for, you can just select that and just it'll set up that team that you used. As long as there's not a member using, like, yeah, as long as there's not a member missing, is what I was trying to say. Battles will proceed even if guild members have registered the same helper. Remove the restrictions. Okay. All right, next, when swapping equipment via touch and drag. Oh, okay, the touch and drag thing to where it would just... Jewel transfer, equipment transfer, gear exchange selection pops up. So you can, okay. Yeah. Not all of those pop up, so you can, you know, just put all the jewels on that weapon. If you guys want to exchange it out, shit like that, yeah. We already got this. We already went through this selective, um... Burning gauge. All right. When combining requests, oh, request scrolls. That, that confused the hell out of me. I was like, requests required. Um, request scroll quantity for enhancement. Yeah, yeah. Ally star grade displayed. So something about pigs. Let's see. All right, pig stuff for like displaying displaying like their points and everything. Say party function has been removed from in top left uh feels bad man i mean given that this wouldn't save if you were like changing characters it would like reset itself so nobody really used it because of just that reason when tapping shoes are owned tickets ui inside of um arena lobby other content lobbies now oh, you can just purchase win streaks information displayed area inside of um tag inside of battle or in guild battle users may immediately move to a guild arch all right users may immediately move to arc buster enhance screen with added button oh it's at the um Monday boss, world boss. All right, let's see. When users have already completed, okay. So if you complete this, yeah, I might complete that. Improve ally review. All right, improved ally review screen displays each ally content usage function added. Okay. Maybe still not going to help the trash reviews that people put, but you know. <laughs> oh, hold up. Guildmasters, Vice Guildmasters can now send messages to all guild members at once. Thank God. Please, for the love of fucking God, yes. Thank you. <laughs> that is something that should have been added like way back then, though. Just saying. Something that should have been added in way back then. Owned effects, filter. Feature added. Allies preview UI. When choosing select. Replacement rewards. Eh. Maximum limit of damage increase. To 1000 trillion. Okay. Matchmaking. Inside of guilt takeover will be revamped. Such as. Depending on. Balance guilt. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. We will see how that goes. We will definitely see how that goes. The fixes you guys can look at yourselves. All right, so we're gonna have an event also, cash the greedy null event. 
when you play the challenge on a greedy nose will appear with a possibility with a probability guild nose box golden guild nose box can give you 500 um ruby discount Eh. i guess that could be good so do do these work on anything inside the ruby shop Oh, they can give you a teared one that you can that you have the time limit to use. I guess. So once I meet him, I can either get one of these. Guild exploration. Now this is what I was looking at. That was really weird. Guild exploration goes up from one to fifteen floors, even though it's. Okay, never mind. Players can break a towel by using a pickaxe when the towel is broken. The player can get rewards. One pickaxe is charged for each hour. Users can, can obtain up to 24 pickaxes once Boss Muster is defeated. Okay, so it's pretty much like a searching the floor things for the boss to go up to the next floor. That's what it is. But yeah. <sighs> this is like an hour or two hour video. For sure. Like, Jesus Christ. That's that's a lot to, you know, just... Get get through. I'm sure some of you guys aren't going to like go through the full video. Because that's, that's a lot to be going through. To be honest. I'm pretty sure some of you guys are going to skip over this video or just get like halfway through it and just stop. And I won't even blame you. I will not even blame you. Hold up. Yeah, so it was Hero. And never mind, they did increase the power. Okay, I just haven't been in here if, like very long. <laughs> or I never really like noticed it because I never really changed like any of those. Oh, let me buy. This is right here. So it was six. It wasn't nine. It was six. So yeah, you would get 18 from here. They increased it to where you're by like two to where you only in, enter here for like once. So that's actually pretty nice. Pretty sure you can buy back in multiple times. If not, then yeah, that's the only time you can buy in. So normally you can only buy up buy in like twice when it's on that date so you can get like 40 on Thursdays but on like other days you would probably get like 24 if you can buy back in so yeah a lot of things coming to the game um, I, I would love to get my two cents about it but Jesus Christ we've extended over our time by so much and I don't want to keep you guys here for too long so i'll give you guys my two cents when the update goes through and we'll explore everything together just you and me going through the seven seas together and me and a whole bunch of essence that's going to disappear during this update for sure i'm not sure who i'm going to actually work on and why is this here i did not oh, i didn't know she had these move these over here so yeah all those are going to disappear within this update. So, yeah, you don't have to worry about it too much. <laughs> but, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, peace out. See you after whenever the update goes live. Swear it's gonna get better real soon. Don't let anyone tell you what you should do. I got a clear view. We're gonna make it soon. Just keep pushing through. You're what you got to lose. You're what you got to lose. You're what you got to lose. Just keep pushing through. Cause what you got to lose.